And I am <laughs> Are you smoking as a true liberal? Can you turn it on when you would, or you turn it off when you would? <laughs> okay, yeah. He's doing it. Hard, hard carrying. Hard carrying. Hard carrying. And proud of it. Okay, so. Um, welcome. Yes. Okay, we have a quorum. I um, bring this meeting to order. That's my pretend gavel. Um, at uh, what is it? Ten o four. Okay. All right. So um, take a look at the agenda, please. And we've changed the order of things, just so it it might seem a little upside down but we're putting the consent items first um, and then um, the president's report because that's when we're going to go into the board goal so we wanted to to get as much as that we could there's some new faces to do oh no not yet that if you see it is here chief executive um, is going to introduce the new strategic leadership team okay. but that's after we I mean sitting around the table here okay that's go ahead, Grace. <laughs> Isn't that what that's what that's what she meant, right? Yes, yeah, but this is Mr. Robert French. He's our director, our new director. We'll be doing a little uh, introduction a little later. Thanks to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have some other new hires as well. So okay, great. yeah. So take a look at the agenda. Are there any questions, issues? Okay. Need a motion to approve the. Oh, is, are there any issues now that you've had a chance to take a look at it? Um, then. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Very good. And then please take a look at the meeting minutes. It's okay to post these as a draft. Remember that was in the yes agenda. until they're approved. Okay. And as soon as they're approved, then the draft will be taken off. Yeah. Oh, see, I'm looking at hard copy and I should be taking advantage of what Tom is doing for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for setting this up, by the way. Are we actually televideoing and archiving today's meeting? Yes, we're recording Okay, so that was our pilot and this is yeah. our, our launch. So we're on TV right now. <laughs> or, we will, or we will be, yeah. The audio. The audio. Oh, the audio only. Okay. okay. Audio and uh, the presentation's on the screen. Okay. okay. Any comments or corrections on any of either of the minutes? Only the aces one, but not just aces. Aces, aces. one. Aces. aces one. Okay. I have a question. So, did we really just approve the August thirty minute in that April meeting? Is right. 
August 30th, 2018. The minute wasn't approved until April. Is that right? Okay, in the bottom of the first page, or where it says agenda minutes, August 30th, 2018. January, February, Probably February. It'll be February, right? I'm sorry, what's your question? Um, so here it says that we approved the August 30 minutes in this April meeting. I don't think that's right. So the right wasn't day. there a was there a meeting in between that time? Did you guys have a be, right? between August last yeah. year and we, this and now? Yeah. I December. think that's no, it would have been February. Okay. It would have been February. Okay. So that would be February whatever that date was. Whatever that February. date was, yeah. Oh, okay. I do now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Good catch. Yep. Okay, with that correction, um, anything else that is popping up? I mean, the minutes are correct, however, on the second page, under President's report, where it says the first town hall meeting will be June 1st, um, our committee met and we decided that we needed more time to, to do more planning with our parents um, in order for that to happen. So that is put on hold. <coughs> Um, I, I want to make clear, um, under closed session, it says public employee performance evaluation, CEO oral report, compensation will remain. That was in open session. That was not in closed session because uh, we're not allowed to talk about salaries in closed session. So, Brown Act. So, that was an open session announcement. So, I want to correct that. Anything else? Okay. So as corrected, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes as amended. Okay. okay one, other, one other thing. Oh, yeah. Did we not discuss um, monitoring of our students beyond WAS? I thought we, that was last meeting. Root persistence and yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's probably been brought up at every meeting. <laughs> but it's not a yeah, that and the chillers. <laughs> but I thought we I thought we specifically had a plan around what to do with that. And maybe we tabled it for today's discussion, but it's just not on here. I don't think. I frankly don't remember that. I remember bringing it up, but I don't remember having a plan to actually carry it out and who was going to do that. I believe the direction from the board after one of our presentations was to bring back at the next board meeting our plan on how we're going to track and monitor data for our, our graduates at WAS, which is on this agenda, today's agenda, um, as one of our presentations. Yeah, and I think it was Peter's request. A board member request. High school graduation be. update, number four. Yes. Okay. So it would actually be at 12 o'clock under presentation and report. Number one, WAS graduation data, board member request. The graduation data and then also the follow-up. Okay. Oh, all right. On this agenda today. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So are we okay or actually it's here. It's under this national clearinghouse data item. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's there. All right. Oh, oh yeah. Regarding yeah. graduating students. Yeah. Right, because Kong, didn't you do a, a yeah. presentation on that? Yeah. And give us some information. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? 
That was a meaty meeting last time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, staff left with 14 things to do. <coughs> okay, so I have a motion and a second. Sure. Okay, and all those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 Okay, good deal. All right. Um, public comments. Do we have any public comments? I don't have the slip. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. You can just give it to me. Oh. Terrific. Thanks, Hilda. Good morning, everyone. My name is Inda. Uh, I just wanted to address uh, the board. Uh, my concern with uh, none of the information being included in the board package as it, as it relates to uh, all of the information missing regarding the complete consolidated application uh, applications for ACES, PAS, and WAS, uh, single time for student achievement, uh, the local uh, control and accountability, uh, accountability plan, um, the academic calendar, the district English learner uh, advisory committee of uh, recommendations. None of that information is missing from uh, the board packet today. Uh, as you all are aware, the majority of uh, people, uh, students that we have here and families are of low income. So for that information not to be included in the board packet, for us to be able to speak today is a very concerning and for us not to have access to that information for us to able to review at the day of board meeting. Uh, I did ask me about that, uh, and of course it's not included. I know uh, she said that only uh, some sort of summaries were included in here, but you guys will be voting on it and you put it, put, put it as a consent item, but we should have uh, that uh, uh, information provided to us today um, for, for review and to be able to take home. And as she said, it is on the website, but we should have it. This is a, an issue that has been brought to this board before, and um, Charter School Division has, uh, has instructed this board to provide it to the, uh, the members uh, at the board meetings before, and it has instructed this board to do so. So I'm not sure what happened, why uh, you guys have not followed through on that request. Again, but I will be following through uh, and informing them if I don't, I'm not sure what happened, why this is not happening again. So I will be following up again. So I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, thank you, Phil. Thank you. Okay, um, any other um, public comments? Yeah, four minutes because of uh, we have translation, and so um, there Uh, thank you, Janet, for translating for us. I appreciate that. Buenos días, mi nombre es María Sánchez. María Sánchez. Soy madre de dos estudiantes de Neisa. Soy madre de dos estudiantes de Neisa. Mi preocupación ahora es la comida. Hay muchas cosas que arreglar. Me morí de la salud. There is a lot of things that that need to be fixed. Me gustaría saber qué está pasando con el servicio de la comida. Hay veces que would like to know what is happening with the services because there are times Los niños reciben una comida de pequeño servicio. The students receive a food that is a very bad uh, quality. Leche en mal estado. Milk and chicken in bad uh, condition. Me gustaría saber si es que ustedes van a proponer qué tiempo nos van a dar para ver los resultados. She would like to know what is, uh, what, what is uh, the plan to fix that and then by the way they have a solution. So 
también quiero saber qué va a pasar con la sobrepoblación estudiantil. Tenemos clases muy llenas. Yo también quiero saber qué va a pasar con la sobrepoblación estudiantil. Tenemos clases muy llenas. Yo también quiero saber qué va a pasar con la sobrepoblación estudiantil. Overpopulation of uh, classroom sizes. There are classrooms that have several students. Y el apoyo sobre los niños que tienen problemas para aplicar sus citas. And then uh, the support that there is for students that uh, need to reclassify. That would be it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the public comments. I um, appreciate that. Now um, we're going to turn it over to our chief executive, interim, and academic officer. All rolled into one. That would be great. Madam President, members of the board, we're so pleased to announce some new members of our team some of that are sitting here with us and in the audience. Um, the first member we would like to introduce you know very well, but she's going to be serving in a new capacity, and that would be Ms. Susan Rodri. Susan has committed 10 years to the organization, and she, um, ACES is Susan at this point. She has um, one more really good year to left, and she, she is committed to serving <laughs> another get it. year. Um, she's excited of where the vision and where we're headed as an organization. So starting next year, she's going to be promoted as the director of elementary education. So we'd like to announce Susan formally to the board. Her three focus areas as a director of elementary education is first providing continuity and transitional support for a new administration of principals here at ACES. As you know, ACES has very little turnover in terms of parents, so we want that to continue. Parents and families. Second is working with our um, Latino and our community to expand our parent education program and continue expanding our parent voice. Uh, and then the third would be uh, providing additional support to our elementary program in the area of expand, expanded broad, course, broad courses of study. Um, Susan, thank you very much for being here and also for next year of service. We're excited to be working with you. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. So with that, we had an opportunity to recruit a principal at ACES and um, the young lady that's here with us today, we are so fortunate to have her. She has worked for Camino Nuevo Charter Academy, is really well-grounded in the dual language immersion program, and her name is Ms. Karin Figueroa. Right here. Here. The interview panel that consisted of teachers are classified, including our parents over here, were overwhelmingly enthusiastic about Karin coming. One of her expertise is professional development, which is our goal three in terms of our organizational goal. And she has started book clubs and also has started parent education programs with her former school. And that was one of the draws. Not to mention that she's fluently bilingual in English and in Spanish, has no um, barriers in terms of communication with the parents, students, and community. So she was an overwhelmingly number one pick. And Kevin, thanks for being here with us today when you're not officially started yet. <laughs> She'll be starting as of July. Thank you. Welcome. Anytime we can snag someone from Camino Nuevo, <laughs> I'm like pretty happy about that. <laughs> the next, our next introduction is a very special introduction because she is actually Dr. Pike. She's one of your former students. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, that sounds good already, right? <laughs> Dr. Rosie Wong is being promoted from the assistant principal at our high school, Wallace Annenberg High School, to our high school principal. She has over 25 years experience in education, and she has a lot of experience with data tracking, assessment and evaluation, and she did her dissertation on how to promote our students towards college and career when you're coming from an underserved background. She's passionate because she is a first-time college goer family in her generation, and she promotes her success to her teachers and also the Upward Bound program. She's also a Trojan undergraduate mm -hmm. in, in UCLA and Trojan uh, for her doctoral degree. So what really matters. <laughs> 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 and you will be very pleased to know there's been two things that she's been working on. One, she's, we've already hired our college and career advisors, new advisors for our high school to start off for next year, so she's built her team in that area. And when we get to the presentation, she's going to be sharing with you their plan on how to track students towards graduation after WAS. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you so much for um, 
allow me to serve as the Wallace Annenberg High School principal. Very excited about that, and it's really utilizing the skills that, and then the different things that I learned from all the you. things that I've been, um, including effective practice class, and um, and that was excited to implement the things that I learned and just the experiences that I've had here. And um, as a first, like um, um, you said, as a first generation college student, um, I feel like working in this community exactly what it's meant to do. And I'm excited to be here. Very excited to continue having you with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just add that one of the great thrills of my job is to see people we've worked with take on these positions of great responsibility. So congratulations, it's very exciting. Um, she's committed to the next four years at our high school, so she's gonna graduate an entire class through and then plus four. Then our last introduction, we are here with uh, our new face at our table, and this is Mr. Robert French. He will be coming in as our director of HR. We upgraded this position from a manager position to director. And Mr. French comes with us to us is a long legacy of HR and perhaps his most valued asset and he has been an elementary teacher and a site assistant principal and principal. So he's able to help HR in that direct support to the school sites that we need. He has a legacy of hiring really great teachers. Uh, his teachers that he's hired have done phenomenal at his school district. And I asked them what the secret to his success was and he said, great, when you go to job fairs, make sure you have the biggest table. <laughs> In addition to, uh, Mr. French comes to us from San Pedro. Uh, he's been a director of HR and assistant superintendent of HR in both Orange County and San Gabriel Valley. And my nickname for him is the Iron Man because he's run, he's competed in the Iron Man Triathlon. Oh my goodness. Do we have a <laughs> Sure, I, I'm just excited for the opportunity. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve this community. Um, I've just been very, very fortunate in my career to uh, to work with just amazing um, teachers, support staff um, that have just done amazing things in communities and have a positive impact in communities. When I did research for this um, this position, this is exactly where I wanted to land um, to serve um, this community. So I love the I love the energy. I have a lot of energy. I talk a lot. Um, I do listen to. <laughs> Um, I love the energy here. I love this, just the positive stuff from everybody that I've met so far, the positive move forward um, approach. Um, and I also have an excellent assistant in Michelle. Um, she's awesome. And she's uh, she just made, made this transition for me um, very smooth so far. So, far. so okay. thank you so much. Really good. And welcome, Lord, to thank all you. of our new hires and our continuing hires with new positions. Really appreciate your willingness to. Aim, no, aim high. Aim high, yeah. Well, hang in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we now come to the consent items. Is there anyone who feels that one of, or one of these consent items needs to be pulled off and um, like to speak to it? Tilda, did you? Okay. What, what um, item are you speaking to? Madam President. Sorry? Um, number eight, item number eight. Number eight, okay. I would like to address item eight, uh, one of the workers' comp carrier, unfortunately, because it has impacted me tremendously, and that would be uh, the, I think, option number one, which is our AmTrust with our current carrier. Um, I, I'm hoping that this board will definitely not renew our contract with them. Uh, they are one of the, I know it's the most cost effective, but it's one of the most horrible workers' comp carrier. Um, just to give you a glimpse, uh, I had scheduled uh, my treatment with uh, them, and just at the last minute, right before my appointment had been scheduled, uh, the treatment facility. Uh, I had scheduled their, my, all my appointments for them, and they uh, they refused. They they were not answering the phone uh, from the uh, the people, the treatment center, and all my appointments were canceled. This has been going on for months. Uh, Asha was not able to get in hold of them that was before. 
uh, it was months and months and months, taking time away from Asha, taking time away from me, taking time away from the treatment center. It is. It actually is takes time away from myself, from the HR here. I, I'm sure Benson can attest to it. It's uh, it's so time consuming. It's actually cost even more money. So I would ask the board not to definitely not to renew the contract with them. They have a very bad reputation. So it might be cost effective on paper, but it's actually one of the worst companies. So I would just recommend not to go with that provider. Thank you, Hilda. On paper, but it's not actually. Thank you. Are we doing these consents as a group or we get to each one? No, it's just if there no consent is the whole we do voting overall. Correct. Do we know if the chillers are stainless steel? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. They are. Components. Components are. The exteriors. Yeah, but the inside you know, the components are stainless steel. Okay. Leonard, may we provide just a 10 second summary on each of these 12 so that sure. we know what we're approving? Okay, so okay. the first one. Number one. I believe you have that in your um in yeah. your you have an executive summary, and so here is the uh one one uh and it's under it's under the um, president's report. <laughs> which people is, feel we need it. You know, we read them in advance, we, which is great. I did. I don't know if I, I did. did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's if everyone would done it. I don't think you need. Then probably not necessary, unless you want to. Okay. <laughs> Just was making sure if it was needed. Okay. Um, they were on the web, and it's great. I like great. It saves time. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So um, here are the consent items. You have, as you mentioned, taken a look at what these mean. And um, I'd like to ask for clarification on one item. For number eight, are we voting yeah. for Amtrak with this consent item? We are Would voting you? to go to Berkshire Hathaway, um, a significant upgrade in service um, to our workers' comp um, services. Um, I've had experience with working with Berkshire Hathaway in my previous life, um, and uh, I'm very pleased with their services and their ability to meet our demands. So we would be voting for Berkshire Hathaway, and we would be voting uh, to transition out of Amway to this Amtrust, correct. Thank you. Okay, so that addresses some issues as well. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Do I have a motion to approve the consent um, agenda? So moved. Second. All those in any questions or discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent items passed. And quite frankly, I'll just do a little editorial here. I'm glad we're moving on number eight, on so item number eight. Yeah, very good. Okay, so president's report. Okay, um, external partnerships. Uh, right now, we have one class at uh, the Accelerated School who is engaged with uh, UFC, Dornsife, Experiential Learning, as well as the uh, Los Angeles um, Football Club, um, which is partially owned by Tara Goober and Peter Goober who were founding members of um, the Accelerated School. And this has been a program that one of the past teachers was engaged with throughout last year, and now they're doing a summer school. And I had the opportunity to um, be present during one of the classes, and it was really terrific. And I had a meeting with uh, Tara Goober and a number of women from USC as well professors, as well as people who are in charge of STEM, and placing up to 2,000 students from across the university in positions where they assist in classrooms, where they assist with other groups um, from their particular areas, so business students are interning and doing things like that. But she has a lot of students who are really experienced and eager to help us in our classrooms and at our school. So we're going to be exploring that, which is really um, amazing. Another one of the women who was there at that luncheon is in charge of the Expo Park. 
and she's in charge of the whole thing. It was really quite an engaging group of women. We will be meeting again to expand the opportunities for the accelerated school to take advantage of UFC partnerships as well as expand uh, the potential that we have to work with Tara Goober as she <clears throat> and we are exploring opportunities um, for a parent and community center here as well as other things that are in the works. So we're, we're working on that and um, our foundation will be, is up and running. And as soon as we have information from Sugarman about our website and a packet that we can give to funders, we will start assertively, I don't wanna say aggressively, but assertively pursuing funders and providing them with information about our accelerated school. Okay, so that's, that's where we are right now. We're gonna bring Elizabeth in on that as well because she's been assisting us with STEM. And I'm thinking you have been helping our students with certain things that we can bring, you know, not that you guys are too busy or anything, but so far it's all women, which is, we can do it. Okay, uh, Collaborative Consensus Committee. Wow, wow, wow. This has been such an exciting and thrilling um, endeavor. Grace and I, but Grace mainly, has been leading our group of administrators from each of the schools, as well as the group of teachers from each of the schools, to come up with a new, vibrant, coherent, um, collaborative evaluation process for teachers. We're really excited. We think we're going to be ready to pilot something in the fall. And so, would you like to add anything? Okay, it's just, it's fabulous. We meet on two either consecutive days or two days that are very close to one another so that teachers don't have to leave their classroom and don't have to spend all day, but we've been able to get quite a bit done. And it's very, very exciting moving away from the old fashioned you know, oh, we got to do this, we got to do that, and really having it mean something to the teachers as well as the administrators. And to have it be collaborative is like the best, loving it. Okay, we will keep updating you on that. Um, the Western Association of Schools Accreditation, WASC, um, had their Wallace visit, and we were congratulated on our prepar preparation for that visit. I was here and met with the team. They were really quite impressed with what we had put together to identify our areas of strength and need. And at the end of the visit, they had identified five areas that were part of their continuing visit. And they had nothing to add. We will not have the full report until maybe a month from now. And at that point, we will share that with you in August but I want you to know that um, the team really was quite pleased with our, um, our showing, if you will, and our, sorry. All right, a little break there. Okay, and um, so that was, that was really fun. And then the Wallace Annenberg graduation at Bovard at USC was great. All of our faculty were able to come and show up in regalia and of course, I always wear my regalia anyway. Mm -hmm. And next year, we're going to have it at Bovard. Uh, we've already put in our request and they said, oh, you're too early. So we're, we're right in line for that. And it won't be on Father's Day, okay? <laughs> so uh, hopefully all the, all the board members will be able to come and wear their regalia as well. Uh, looking forward to it. We had a wonderful speaker who I met um, during a Dornsife uh, USC presentation for uh, leadership, and her name uh, is Carmen Naloya, and she is incredible, and her speech was really heartfelt. She had been a foster student, or a foster child. She had been involved in the juvenile <coughs> justice system. She did not say for what, but <coughs> she did. And then she reconnected with her family. She was able to uh, graduate from USC 
um, just this year. And so she's going on to work with students who are underserved and start organizations to support students who are in foster care. So she's continuing to do the work because she is one of those people who is devoted and wants to give back. So that was really exciting. And um, I just have to say, I had a few little uh, words at the end before the commencement, and I was really trying to figure out what to say because, you know, commencement speeches sometimes in one ear and out the other, and there's everyone just wants to get the diploma and go out to dinner, especially on Father's Day. So uh, I had been preparing for that, and as I was preparing in the morning, I looked at the Kleenex box. And on the Kleenex box, it had words. And the words were bravery, kindness, awesomeness, courageousness, fearlessness. <clears throat> and I just took the box, and that was my prop, and I just talked about those words. You find inspiration in the oddest places at the oddest times. I didn't even realize that there were words on the, on the box until that morning. So I just want to say, look for inspiration in really interesting places. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to the discussion of board goals, which everyone has been waiting for. And Kong is going to put on to the screen so that you can see it, all of the different um, ideas that we received from, and I believe this is in hard copy, right behind the agenda, in case um, you want to take a look at that. Okay, so we had responses from almost everyone, and um, we <coughs> took a look at these. Grace and I met, and um, we have really thought very um, hard and long about all of this, but I want you to take, I want our board in particular to take a minute to review these, I know you've seen them, I know you've looked at them, but I want you to take a look at them because what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna ask you, and each of you are going to respond um, to this particular prompt, and that is, what did you notice, or what are you noticing about those, that, uh, those suggestions? Were there any ahas? Were there any surprises for you? Julie, to put it in context. Yes. When, um, how long ago were we given this Questionnaire, I don't recall. So it makes me think it's a while ago. Or I'm slipping. Was yeah, maybe just, two weeks. Is it just two weeks ago? Yeah, maybe two weeks. And and people were pretty responsive. Yeah. And not that it might yet. Yeah, okay. There's a lot to happen in the last 120 days. Right. Well no, it's been it's been after that, yeah. sooner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Peter, hi. We're just getting into the board goals now, so Perfect timing. <laughs> so um, as you take a look at these, I thought I would go old school and just chart if you had any surprises or any ahas. Can I help the board for 90 seconds, Peter being here? Um, yes. Just, just to introduce real quick the new hires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. I'm so task-oriented. You know. <laughs> I know. Okay, right. Grace. Oh, okay. We'll do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Really, really, really no, no. We're glad to have you here. Uh, uh, I, I typically waste here. everybody's time, so I apologize. <laughs> and Bill Ford. Yeah. <laughs> Susan was going to retire. She's going to give us one more year to help out with the transition, and she's really excited about where the organization is going. So she's being promoted to director of elementary education. Awesome. Uh, we went on a three-month search. Three-month search, and uh, so pleased with the quality of candidates. And there's one candidate that's moving forward. And we can't replace Susan, but we'll help out with the transition the next couple of years. Ms. Karin Figueroa, who's our principal at ACES, has been introduced to the faculty and staff, has already started working, but her official start is not until July. She comes with us from Camino Nuevo Charter School, four years of experience, very well grounded in dual language immersion programs, fluently English and Spanish. Uh, Scott was on the parent interview to support her. Then we have our new principal that's being promoted from assistant principal. And this is a very special introduction because she's Dr. Rosie Wong, who used to be one of Larry's students at USD. <laughs> we think she'll succeed. I was going to say, <laughs> you've already overcome a lot of obstacles. <laughs> um, she's committed to at least four years graduating a hopeful group. And 
one of her charges, her and I, we've already worked on is we've already hired our college and career advisors at our high school for next year, so she's starting in tax. And if we can get to it, when we get to it, she's going to share the presentation on how we're going to track our students past graduation uh, based on one of our board member requests at our free, previous board meeting that we're <coughs> already working on a plan for. And last but not least is Iron Man, because he has <laughs> You shouldn't have put that out there for her. He's a father of four, <laughs> comes, to, comes to us from the South Bay. Why we hired him, he's very experienced in HR. We've upgraded this position to director of HR. He's been assistant superintendent of HR in both Orange County and San Gabriel Valley, um, has worked as a director of HR, and he's been a principal and assistant principal, so knows how to support our school. And that's Mr. Robert French over here. That's me. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And apologies again that I, I was late this morning. Sorry, Madam President. We're back to the board. Oh. So that's all right. Madam President, I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, just to re-familiarize you and to let everyone know, the reason that we asked the <clears throat> board members to give us information was because after the last meeting, the staff left with 14 individual items to accomplish and it it becomes overwhelming so one of the things that um, grace has asked for us to do is for the board to identify three goals that were important and urgent both important and urgent so that we could have direction for the board and that's what the board is reviewing right now and um, we'll, get, we'll get to some of your feedback, and then I'll go into the why, the what, and the how. Okay. So you were going to share with us the prompt. Oh, the prompt was, I believe I did, just did, to give, <coughs> to give three board priorities, board goals that are urgent and important. What? Could you just say it? <laughs> okay. Um, the board was given about eight goals that Grace had come up with, but that's a lot. And so what she was asking us to do was to pull this all together so that we could um, help staff really understand what the board goals were and what we wanted. And um, if I'm missing something, please. Let me know. Okay. Um, so you've taken a look at this previously. And so now what I'd like to do is just get some um, feedback from you about any surprises, any ahas, uh any, um, you don't have to weigh in on your perspective, but I want yeah, all of the board members to respond in one way or another, okay? Just about this particular group of of suggestions. Um, Elizabeth? I, you know, I was uh, uh, impressed by the, the <laughs> fact that there, I was expecting that there was going to be this great variety of many competing interests, like you were saying, that it was, could be overwhelming. And, and I found that there was a very common thread. Um, and I thought that was a positive thing. This is, gives us some solid ground to kind of uh, build around. Um, and, you know, we can discuss what those common thread, that common thread was, but I felt that it was generally going back to the kind of basic thing of what we provide here, okay? That basic kind of core service education and it was very much focused on teachers and students and um, almost going back to even I felt like it was in your comment Peter that even going back to accelerate it why do we even use that term go back to the text you know we have to go back to this basic kind of core principle and clarify it and then do what is necessary to make that happen. Okay. Very broad. So I, you know. You can of, pass and I'll get back no, to you no, later. No, no, no. Comment okay. on the goals. I have to look backward a little bit over the past year. Okay. 
and you know the underpinnings of the organization have really changed in many positive ways. So I think the common thread and what it's all about now is we we've got people in place, we've um, got our organization in place. It's really now just everybody doing what they need to be doing and pulling forward. The common thread is because we all know what we want to have happen here. So we've made the big changes to affect the new future, and let's just do it. That our new motto. Excuse me. Right. Let's just do it. Anyway, we're going with. I think it's probably right. You might have something to say about that. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> but, uh, but again, how then is kind of the tricky thing. But I like how uh, some other people were saying, I'm not sure who to attribute it to, but let's not get too much in the weeds. Let's just yes. focus on our core service um, and the nature of it. Our core service, obviously, is the education and that product, but what is the nature of it? Is it accelerated? Is it. Uh, what, what kind of defining it and then doing what it's going to take to make it happen. The weeds are things like to professional development, make our faculty better or not. I mean, what, how? You know, yeah, we have to agree on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. Um, the accelerated schools, um, Hank Levin from Stanford uh, developed the accelerated schools model. And specifically, it was to break the predictable cycle of failure for underserved students. That was the purpose. To accelerate their learning, to treat every child as gifted, and to, as you know, it says, accelerate the learning. So staying out of the weeds as a board, but being able to give direction. Okay? Larry? So, as you said, common threads. I think I wrote down four as I was listening and thinking at a sort of a high level. One was, and I really appreciated Peter's making the point boldly right at the beginning. We want to think about mission and be sure we're the mission is what we want it to be, and then we're on mission. Um, and then the other three that I, I really thought about were, was there's a focus on pers quality personnel at all yeah. levels, but teachers was where most of the focus was. But but we need all of our staff to be. The right people right. who are able to do a good job and opportunity to succeed and, and continue to grow. Um, community um, communications. It just all of these in some way, shape, or form talk about the importance of communicating with our with the community and making sure that we, we were we were in touch with them. And then I felt it fairly strongly. I think I read it in the other ones, but maybe I wanted to, is, is stability. And I see that both as stability of personnel and stability of the finance. And those sort of were the three big areas, and lots and lots of things fit under each of those or, or across those. But those aren't small challenges to, to address on a regular basis. And the mission guides are. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had. Yeah. <laughs> Peter? Yeah, I mean, look, I think uh, I think the mission question to me is sort of fundamental, right? The, the uh, when in my view, the best organizations when they engage in strategic planning are always driven by what the mission is, right? So when you have difficult decisions to make, when you need to prioritize, when you need to choose between two competing ideas, you can always go back to the mission question, right? And the best mission statements and ideas that I've seen that are most effective answer, and I said this, answer the why question. Why are we sitting here doing what we're doing, right? So. Um, you know, small examples, right? Let's, you know, there are uh, there are public interest organizations that are all about homelessness, right? And their mission is everybody deserves a roof over their head. It's simple. It's driven by a simple message. Everybody deserves a roof over their head. You know, uh, my friend Jamie Simonoff, who started Ring, you know, the doorbell? Yeah, yeah. He's got a simple mission, right? Reduce neighborhood crime. That's it. Everything he does with his products is all about reducing neighborhood crime. He's answering the why question. Why does he do what he does? He wants to reduce crime in your neighborhood. Why are we sitting here? I think we got to come back fundamentally to that question and let it drive decision making. So I, if we accomplish anything, I think that's critical, especially when we're focused on the educational mission of the school. And then the other two are very consistent with what you heard. One is sort of focusing on the quality of our product, right? I think about it from a very business, corporate business perspective. What are we selling? We're selling the best educational product we can possibly put together for our students. And so what does that mean, right? That means best teachers, best administrators, 
access to resources to do so, communicating in full transparency, you know, everything that I put in there. And then third and finally, you know, which is what Larry touched on, you know, I called it sustainability, right? Uh, financing, budgeting, physical plan. How do we ensure that we're going to be here 100 years from now? Uh, and so those are the three things that I would focus on. Okay. Cindy. So I think um, what was interesting to me was something that we've been focusing on uh, within my organization at work is, you know, life readiness of our employees. And so I think the same would have great here, life readiness of our, our graduates. And one thing I think, you know, there's a, it's all very good and well focusing on academic excellence and tech scores and making sure our students are getting in, getting offers from good colleges. But I think, you know, two words that are really important to me are perseverance and resilience. And granted, a lot of our students are already resilient, right? Yeah. They're coming coming to the school with, you know, um, having already, you know, accomplished a lot. Um, but I think giving them the tools to, to tackle college, because that's a whole different thing, not from an academic standpoint, but from a characteristic standpoint. And how do we do that? And what programs can we add to maybe the after school program? help them, maybe, maybe that's resume, building, you know, whatever it is, the whole package on getting them ready for, for life beyond. Kind of what I was interesting. Some of the themes came up there, but that's kind of where I was headed. Yeah, it would be very interesting um, to hear from Rosie about your plan to get information about our students. Um, we do a really good job of making our students eligible for college. And now it's time to find out how ready they really are and what we can do to make them more ready, not just for college, but for career, for life, as you mentioned. So, I may be jumping into Rosie's report later. And I don't want to do that, but but I think it's it's not only readiness, but to succeed in college or succeed at work. But but one of my colleagues who runs a college advising program at the school in enrollment management, he says, now that you get them accepted, they have to actually enroll in August, which is a problem and they have to re-enroll in year two and his, his theory is if they re-enroll in year two we've got them and they'll finish college and that's that's our goal is not to get them to college but to get them to finish college and, and that's um so i hope i'm still thunder from you rosie but uh, but i think that that's when we think about what are we preparing them for it's, it's to get all the way through college and uh, we, we've been studying the charter school that usc runs and, and what happens to the students if they go on and we have some really interesting information that they're really Talks about the challenges you face. I don't know how well we how well we can or we do prepare for some of those experiences, but it's, it's a big part of it too. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Any any other final? I was just gonna Go ahead. I'm just going to add to that. You know that that we we keep sort of resting on this. We do a really good job of preparing our students for college, and that's awesome. Okay, great. But I don't want to get too comfortable with that either. You know, I want to make sure that um, we continue. It, it's a very challenging, I sort of work at that nexus of, yeah. you know, coming into college and then staying and getting into college and that sort of thing. And I don't think we can take that for granted, is what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't think we can say, oh, that's done. Now we can move on to all these other things. I, I want to just make sure that we're, we're doing everything we can to continue to make sure that academically, and, you know, that 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 core as eligibility is still there. There are many things can shift in admissions. You know, what we're looking for now. Now we're looking for now, and and I want to be mindful of that. I'm I'm in agreement with you, and I'm stepping out of the facilitator role now, and I'm going to be a board member, and say, yeah, I'm I'm very concerned that we need to no. Let me put it another way. We need to broaden our academic program. We are having a, a cluster of students from time to time who leave us in eighth grade because we don't have honors classes in ninth grade or we don't have advanced enough advanced placement courses. So you're absolutely right. For the students who do remain with them, we do a good job of making them eligible, making sure they're eligible. And a number of them do go on and do quite well. And we can't stop there. We I'm not even sure that we are, if, if we are or aren't doing a good job. I don't know what the metrics are that we're using to say that. It really hasn't been 
Are that they're right. eligible? Well, yeah, I mean. I, I'd, I'd like to hear it. We really haven't, I don't think we've heard it yet. Oh, oh okay. Unfortunately, um, we haven't published the list of um, our graduate students and where they're <coughs> headed off to. And, and it, it just, it's been, still, it's been confusing. So where they're going, are they eligible? And, you know, I just, you know. I agree. Been, I think uh, we're saying that they're ready and that we do a good job. I'm not sure that's true. Me either. Maybe we are, but I'm, I'm not convinced yet. But John, no. Can I just make two quick comments? Sure. So number one, right, uh, what you just said really goes to the mission question, right? Yeah. We're the accelerated school, but we don't have honors and AP classes. Like that doesn't make any we sense. We have to some AP classes and some honors. Uh, but, 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 but like that's that's a question, right? I mean, if if we're right. called the accelerated school, that's the mission. We have to be driven by that. And so, are we? I, I'm I'm not sure, right? So I, I think we should be, but I'm not sure we are, right? Second. I agree entirely. Like, I hate getting hung up on, oh, well, everybody got into a two or four year college. And I, I don't care. I, I don't. I want to know, like, do these kids have stick to itiveness and perseverance and study skills and independent thinking and be able to problem solve and be able to and, and have passion and lifelong love of learning? I mean, that's what's going to make them successes. Do I get consensus on this? <laughs> so it's sort of like, it's sort of like, like I don't want to ask the wrong question. Like I, we've said for years, we're doing great. We're this ranking in the state, and all these kids go to college. I just think that that's crap. I don't care. I want to know if they're successful, right? Using metrics that matter. Yeah. So, and so we have to think as like business people too. I mean, to go back to your friend's yeah. core business, yeah, yeah. You know, mission to make the neighborhood right. safe, reduce neighborhood crime. You know. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I so that's good. I just jumped in too fast. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, so, Leonard, you know, I'll so you have to think of it as, um, okay, well, well, then we can do better. So we're doing great. Well, let's do better. Let's do better totally. because we've got competitors. And do we have an underserved population within the school of students that can excel? We've been spending a lot of time and resources on moving the bottom tier of students uh, and it's easier to do that. We, I, I, I believe it's not that, easier to do that. Well, I believe that we're, I believe that we're having, um, that we're missing on some of the top tier students that have academic potential by not serving them as well. Well, I, I think even more basic. I mean, Hank Levin's model, the accelerated school model, is very clearly laid out model. And it, yep. Twenty years ago, and the question might be just to what extent to our current curriculum and programs match what he has, and he hasn't written much about it in the last 10 years. No, no, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's been off to another thing. Um, but but what, how, do, how does our model, how does our curriculum align with what the accelerated model was? And, and I think also, how does the accelerated model jive with what we expect today? Right? Because, because right the model, model yeah. needs some, some, right. some, some, some tweaking. Okay, and we're going to take a look at all of that now on our red tree. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> can we, get we can't do it in a board. Can we invite Hank? Sure, we can. <laughs> yeah. And it's also very difficult to teach things like resilience. We, we struggle with this in college. Yeah. Sure. This isn't like, oh, we just need a resource center yeah. and we can teach, you know, grit. It's like, no. I mean, we, and we also can't assume that because people are underserved that they, they need, they've got grit or that they don't have grit right. or that other people do have grit. It, it's like it's also hard to measure. It, it's very difficult to measure. We don't even know what we're talking. Okay, so I'm gonna bottle this energy for a retreat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many times have I <laughs> when Okay, all right, all right. You're gonna help me organize that, okay? Yeah. Um, all right, we I wanna move along because Grace and I did the same kind of thing that you're doing. And we came up with the synthesis of this. But before we do that, I want to go into the what, the why, and all of that. So on the overhead over here, the why. Um, why we're doing this now. We need focus goals. As I mentioned, last uh, board meeting, staff left with a number of individual things to do that weren't really driven by a mission or a clear board goal. So, 
14, right. There were 14 separate items, right. And so we're, as a board, we continue to count on our staff and our staff is really good at coming back and providing us with what we've asked for. However, they're sort of like trying to go all over the place and we really need something um, coherent for them. Staff will be much more efficient and effective when they know exactly where we are so that they can fulfill these wishes. Um, once we have a few of the board goals, a few strategic board goals, as uh, all of our stakeholders will also know where we're going to and what our purpose is. And so I think clarifying the mission again and recommitting to whatever it is that we are about is really important because then our staff can engage with all of our stakeholders, both internally and within the school, as well as our community, our parents and community. Um, we have three separate LCAP. Now they do overlap. And you've seen in the presentations that those overlaps are really helpful to identify because it brings coherence. But there are still separate issues that each of the schools deal with. And if we can come together and have an organizational goal from the board that as school as a whole. Now, school as a whole was one of the ideas that Hank Levin talked about um, early on. And when I was at uh, Cal State LA, the Charter College of Education was a school as a whole. And we met that way, which is means all different departments, and in this case, all of our different schools come together to deal with issues that are overarching and across all of those schools, which is what the board goals really are all about. And then the what? Governance. We're the board, and governance is where we're at. And policies. Policies and direction. That's what our job is. The management has the how. They're the ones that come up with the strategies, and we can approve those or not, but they're the ones that are on the ground doing all of these things that will reach the board goals, that will make the accelerated schools like that little guy on our on our deal, you know, aim high, where he's really reaching for the sky. So that's why we're doing this right now. And what Grace and I did was, we took a look across all of these, and we came up with three synthesized goals, and we will share them with you now. Okay. The first is, Redesign space, and, and you'll notice these all have verbs that start with. Redesign space utilization. Right now, we have teachers that don't have their own classrooms. We have administrators that don't have their own offices. And one of the things that our funders and our partners are interested in is, because they're ready to bring all kinds of programs to us. They just need space. And we don't even have space for the students that we have in the classrooms. So ACES is at their cap. The accelerated schools is over its cap. The high school still has some room to grow. And so one of the things that we need to do is really take a look at space utilization. If we're going to have a parent and community center, if we're going to have a college and career readiness center, then space utilization is huge. And it feels as though nothing can really happen until we grab a hold of that issue. And looking at the financials, my recollection is that the student count is below what was budgeted and below our... High school. High school. 1700 and... What, what are we at, 1750? So budgeted ADA is 1750. We've been trending under that or the past year. Where did we get the number 1850 at one point? Or 18? I think we've said approximately 1,800 students. Yeah. But, but 
but we're budgeting for 1750 and we're at what's um, ADA with the enrollment? My ADA right now, 93% over this past year on average. That's the ADA with the, the 1750. But the enrollment. Rosie, do you know oh. how many students you have at the high school? How many is our cap? What's our cap? 688. 200 students for that. And we ended okay. enrollment at 1767 this year. So, and our and our authorized enrollment total is 1795. Look, for each I understand. Okay. okay. I just wanted to just get back to yeah, yeah. the line of what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Leonard, one of the things that has been a practice in our district is that we budgeted for more than we were supposed to. So now, LAUSD keeps coming back and saying, but this is not what you can, you're authorized to budget for because it always exceeded the charter They're right. amount. Yeah. Yeah, so you, when you're going to see Vincent's numbers, Vincent's going to be a little bit more faithful to what we're supposed to because we're getting. Well, we problems. can't budget for more than we either A, can physically house or B, or are authorized to have. <laughs> Pretty fundamental. Right, but if we had all of those high school students that filled up our enrollment, where would we put them? Right. Okay. Okay. So that's the first one. The second one, accelerate and improve student outcomes. And I think that's yeah. pretty much what we've gathered here. Um, to accelerate and improve student outcomes means hiring, orienting, training, and retaining quality personnel. Upping our programs broadening the um, cu curriculum so that our students are challenged, bringing back the arts. Again, we don't have space for that. So we see these two as being really critical. And then finally, building a communication system to engage and inform all stakeholders. Well, one of the things that we've been working on um, when we've been working with um, our parents is what are the best ways of communicating? How do teachers communicate with parents now? Can we you know, expand that? Grace is working on, with uh, Sugarman, on, which is a, an organization to assist us with um, our outreach to the community and painting a picture of who, of what TAS is, and the communication from teacher to teacher, across schools and so this is a communication system is is where we're headed at this point since not everybody knows what's going on so those were our three are those your priority order or is it just three that you could just three okay just three and i see finance implicated in all of them yes no, no, i would if they were prioritized i'd switch the order i don't care if i would love to see a word answer if some way here, we talk about accelerating improvement in student outcomes, but I think we really need to have in there sort of monitoring that or, you know, so we, so we just don't say we're doing better. I know that we all know that, but I think it needs to be stated. So what would you, what would you how would you reframe that? Accelerate, improve, and, and, measure, and monitor, measure, or monitor. Measure, measure, okay. Yeah, student outcomes. Okay, and then that's a very broad stroke. Okay, well it is because that's a board are, goal. Yeah, However, yeah. then one of the roles of staff will be to develop strategies and ways to accomplish yes. that, to yeah. monitor that. We say as, one word as well as indicators of success. Any of that, but as long as it's added to this. Okay, it's added. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Grace is getting this down. I think Mia is too. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so I wanted this to be by consensus, but um, I just as soon have a vote on it. <laughs> if these can be the 2019-2020 board goals for this year, um, I would like a motion to approve these. About whether we need to vote on it? Or no, what do I think of the goals. The goals. Um, what do I think? If, well, I like the goals. Um, I think number two is pretty broad. We'll have to figure out how you measure it. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, but but I that's up to staff. And, uh, and then I think <laughs> acutalization and I think communication are two issues that we've got for a while that we should deal with. I like those. And the middle one is the critical one, right? I mean, yeah. that goes we, look, yeah. we as a board have done a really good job over the last 10 years of uh, like making sure we have a physical footprint and new beautiful buildings and we have plenty of, you know, we have money and our budgeting has been good and we've really tightened the belt and now it's time to focus on our core product, right? And so we have a great platform to build on. So I think number two is the most critical one. But I mean, we can, they don't have to be numbered, but we can a, certainly that's go a that pretty, yeah. That's a pretty, like, that's, that's a very, mission. very big that's category. That's, that's our mission, and that drives so That's a good number one. I yeah. would say focus on students should appear at the top of the list. Okay. okay. I yeah. guess I, I, the one that currently sits at the top spot about space utilization, I understand the importance. And it's been driving a lot of things that go on for a long time, and and I'm we're often part of a, we're often a victim of what we've done in the past. And there's a question in research as to facilities matter in terms of student outcomes, and I'm the leader of the research group that says they don't. Um, that means every child should still have a safe, clean, good place to go to school every day, and teachers should have places they want to go to work every day. But it's going to improve student learning. So I would add to this list or replace that one with something about personnel which the word is missing here, and the people who make the school work every day seem critical to me. Well, you can't accelerate and improve student outcomes with quality people. per well, that's, I'm, I'm willing to put them in there, and that's yeah. fine. And I'm willing to say it's assumed in that, it and I'm fine. I would have even assumed measurement in that. Yeah. Yeah. So because okay. that's, the, that's, that's the how that that's fine. staff does. I just want us to be clear that we all recognize that. Yeah, okay. And I'm happy to leave the facilities issue as, as part of the discussion, because especially we have to keep everybody there. But it, it's it's um I didn't excite me as much as the other piece. And I don't even see it as critical. Yeah. I think there's some things that could yeah. be I see your face, yeah. but I think there are some <laughs> things that are I know my nonverbal speak volume. No, listen, no, 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 no. Look, we have extraordinary facilities so far. I agree. Okay. Beautiful So can we can we utilize them a little better? Can we move yeah. them? All that but I don't I think that we can, can we? We must. I will tell you this. We could spend $5 million straightening out the facilities next year, and it won't change the outcome. That's right. Okay? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay. So, well, wait. I, well, I think that's a little too a little shaky. That's a little too flip, right? Because if I would tell, if I would say to you, if we uh, used the house that we bought and built more classroom space and could use somewhere else to have, like, a music and arts theater, you don't think that would change the program? That to offer think, music and art that we don't offer now. We can also or what if, or what, if, what if we can put a soccer field out here and suddenly we had a varsity soccer team? So you can't just say, I'm sorry, but you cannot just say flippantly, space doesn't matter, period. Do I think it is a priority over the other two? No, I don't personally. But it doesn't not matter. I will tell you this. We added on tens of millions of dollars worth of facilities and have poor outcomes than we did 20 years ago when we had a small. You, you misunderstand. You misunderstand I, I, my no, point. I, I, I get. I get what you're I'm saying. not sure. Like, look, yeah. if, look. If what you're saying is building bright, shiny new buildings doesn't mean students are going to be better and 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 taught better and learn well, yes, I 100% agree. It has to it goes back to personnel. That's number two, right? We have four. We have we have 100 students right? yes. off campus. But in I another building. See, and I don't know that we should have that. I am, I am singularly focused now on, if it were up to me, at some point I would have, wouldn't have even maybe grown as much as we did. I want to, I don't care if it's 500 students, 1,200 or seven. I want them to really be doing well. And I'm, I'm not. I do I, too, I, when I, they don't have a good classroom. I worry we're going to add five more classrooms and we'll have five more classrooms worth of kids that are average. So I think so. I don't mind doing that and looking at that, but I don't want us to think that that's going to move the needle tremendously. I think that we should include how we use our facility as part of a program to improve learning. Absolutely. And and, and I think that that all the, you know the statement you made is is we can spend five million dollars next year, scores won't go up. But if we spend five million right over the next ten years, that may be one piece of what helps us recruit exactly faculty and administrators. Yeah, yeah. And groups of students who are that's what I'm saying. That, that will get us there. Correct. So, so that's and it's, it's something we want to do, but there's there's sort of two pieces to it. There's the the immediate need of we're overcrowded, 
Right. All right. And are there ways to well, what I'm not clear on is capacity for for Wallace Annenberg is 686, and there are 490 students there. Those are the rough numbers I heard, Rosie. Okay, I'm, I'm close. Um, does that mean that there is classroom capacity in that building that could be used for middle school children or not? Okay, I wouldn't put elementary school children there, but but I just don't know what what what, what those things are. But it seems to me one step is to really find people who are expert in how you utilize space to see if we can utilize what we do better, and then we could develop a longer term capital program right. to meet those needs. Right. That's a long term sort of thing that has to one fit into what do our goals look like about learning, yeah. and how are we going to what kind of for example, if we set our goal is to reduce class size by five students per classroom, that's an immense implication for the facility that we're sitting in. Um, if we say we're comfortable with class sizes and we want more people to provide other services for children around those classes, it has not quite as immense a need, but a very different demand on how we allocate space and, and build new space. So I think we have to be absolutely clear on what it is we're going to do, and then we really need to figure out how to use space, and in the meantime, we need to see if there are, and I don't, I just don't know the answer to this, and I don't want to make the assumption that we're doing it best or not, that are we using the space we have in the most efficient possible way, or are there some things we can squeeze out of it as we look and at it? And it's number that. one, I don't, I don't it's not really a subset of number two. There are so many pieces missing yeah. from number two that are implied. I'm not sure why number one is being called out as one of the big three initiatives. Well, I agree. I think, I think number, I think the middle one there. Is where our laser focus has to be. Absolutely, and and, and then where are, where are everything you? else grows from that. And, but you you know the other thing I've seen over the years watching this is that doing facility stuff is a very feel good thing. Yeah. The board leaves, we feel we've raised money, we have put up in a building, or we've done a, whatever it is. So it's what happens you, in you can look at, it's, But it hasn't. It really, if anything, it it's made our outcomes a little bit worse. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. But I, I think it's almost a subset of number two. I, okay. I, I just, it, it, very cautious. I'm about, good with that. I'm very cautious about. So we have two goals. That's great. It, just because we have a center doesn't mean that what we're it, it, exactly. It doesn't mean that, that what we're trying to do there is happening. Um, but we go so home and we feel good because goes, we have a center. It kind of goes back <laughs> to the iPad thing. Oh right. no, we got a bunch of iPads. About exactly. what's happening with that's the iPad. Exactly right. Nothing. That's so right. that's the thing. I saw our friend Susan Rodri perform miracles at a church annex center. Mm -hmm. yeah. Church annex for many years. We're still performing miracles. We're performing miracles well, at the church center. <laughs> I, I know you are, but the other one, the other one that we're no longer at, right? yeah. the little yeah, building, yeah. you know. And she was doing that for for many years. So it depends on what's happening. We're tripled up. I'm a full. Professor at which I've been there for over over 20 years, and I, I I'm tripled up on my office, tripled like I was when I was a PA. I've never been more productive. Right. Just out of necessity, but you know what I mean. It's, right. it's I, I think it's I think we I, I anyway I'm saying the same thing. We need to subordinate it. Okay, we need to subordinate. And it. I so, that to be diminished. That that's, oh, it can't be diminished because we won't we won't bring the arts back. Well, we have to do whatever's urgent. That's right, whatever's urgent. Mm -hmm. But um, and for me personally, and I'm, this is I'm not facilitating now. I'm being a board member. For me, it's urgent to get those teachers out of the library and out of the multi-purpose room and into classrooms. And it is essential to get administrators into offices where they can have conversations with people and do their work. That to me is. But you, the proper utilization of space, I don't know if any of us have expertise on that. There are all kinds of new things being done with. Oh, the how, believe me, it's going to be we hire we hire someone who is an expert in space utilization, working a little bit with Tom, and we develop a, a utilization plan. And I mean, we can't just say, oh, put another, you know. Well, but, but, but you, you actually can't. I mean, I don't know the layout of the. The facility well, we well now, enough to we know what kind of space piece, is, but you property. can put temporary buildings in places yes. and, and, and immediately achieve some of the goals you wanted to achieve. That's correct. Um, and and that's not as desirable as having a gorgeous building like this in the long term. Right. But if the goal is to make the library a library and not additional classrooms, to make the multi-purpose room a multi-purpose room and not additional classrooms, and to create office space for people who need quiet or frequent places to work, there are ways to do that very quickly. 
Right. Um, and, and, and the state kind of has a surplus of temporary buildings in it because. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, we, people, we, we know what we're talking about. I mean, you know how to do those sorts of things. Yeah. So I think that, that that's <clears throat> space becomes crucial in terms of how many classrooms do we need and where do they have to be and how close can we get to where they have to be tomorrow. And then in the long term, if this really is working, right. how do we create a facility that, that gives us that in the right way? But but it also, by not building a school and then saying, oops, it gives us the ability to really think of what is our idea for how to use space right. Mm -hmm. and, and you have probably far better ideas than I have. I'm quite confident of that. But we don't know if they're going to, if our definition of work is going to matter, and we don't really know what's going to happen five years out through those expectations more broadly. Uh, and so, we also have these concerns around whether this recession comes, what they're going to do to our funding. And if we build capital with private funds that are raised elsewhere, that may matter less. We just, I, to me, there's ways to, to, to create facilities that yeah. enable us to, to get the pieces we need right away. Like the library seems pretty crucial. The library that's a real library, right? So well, maybe, well, well the even library, if it's a media center as opposed to a library. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there you go. We, we <laughs> have I, ideas about what, what a what the yeah. how you utilize that space that's that we right. now call the library. Is part of number two. That's right. All right? That's exactly what we right. want to be able to utilize it as we think is best, right. not as classrooms for and children how and crowded. Well, anything we do support number two. Yes, that's right. Push that ball forward. And is, are we spending money in the right place? Are there other competing ideas in number two that would better utilize the money? If we have competing demands, then yeah. We and do have competing demands. Really we need great yeah. features. But I don't see how having great teachers and having the facilities to house them. Because a lot of it has to do with money. Are we finance, gonna, yes, well, that's finance. why I said I believe finance is implicated in of all course. of this. Right. Well, well, finance underpins everything. It doesn't have yeah. to be quite as explicit. I think that's we're on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It sounds, like, it sounds like we're subordinating the facilities piece, but not taking it off. We're going to do the facilities piece, but it's going to be driven by number two as opposed to be kind of a standalone. So it's the same yeah. thing. It's just you go from two to one. Right. I mean, sorry, three to two. Right. And it's whatever we do with space is just I think the board direction is it's gotta be driven by improving student outcomes. Mm -hmm. Which you were gonna do anyway, so it's fine. We're all the same. Okay. Have, we probably don't need to vote on this. Okay, yeah. so by consensus, yeah, yeah, you're good. we're down to two, with number one being subordinate to number two. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. We're good. Okay. We're fabulous. Right. Let's give ourselves a hand. Yeah, nice. Okay, great. You deserve a break. Let's take a 10 minute break. Okay, okay 10 minute break. break. And, and there's uh, coffee and juice. And awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a board meeting with a break. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure we the others, by just definition. Just slightly ahead of well, time. No, we, but we spend the material out ahead of time. Everybody needs to read it. Yeah, I think it's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So I won my big case. So I don't have to report No, 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 no. Summer judgment. The materials that were projected to be archived, and how can people get a hold of those? On the website. We'll be posting these on the website. Right. All of the presentations. Okay. If you wouldn't mind, Mrs. Uh, Zockelquin, one last final word on our discussion. Yeah, no, not uh, a right there. <laughs> Thank you very much for the consolidated or an upgrade. I don't know. from our board members and our priorities moving forward. So the next spring back from this position would be to take a look at the two that we agreed on: accelerating improving measures and student outcomes. And I will be bringing forth indicators of success and metrics for the board to take a look at to see. Is this the right direction that we want to head in terms of gauging our success? So that will be at the August court meeting. Thank you very much, because one of the things that uh, we know about education is if it gets assessed, it gets done. And so having the metrics ahead of time, having the metrics ahead of time really helps. That's not the uh, unique education, by the way. I was just going to yeah. say. <laughs> Shocking how, uh, how uh, legal associates uh, feel the need to get things done when there's going to be accountability. Yeah, well, okay, back in, back in the day uh, when Grant Wiggins was, was big on testing, it was witty wig. What you test yeah. is what you get. Okay, so thank you, great. Now we're going to move to the presentation and um, the college dashboard was taken off because I'm now looking at a new 
agenda. And we're going to start with um, stop there. Our new principal of what? So one of our oh back, goody oh goody one okay. of our greenbacks at our last board meeting was how are our graduates doing in the graduating class and what is our plan to track them in the future on their future success and what additional supports that we would need. So Dr. Wong is here with our college and career advisor, Ms. Gloria Zayala. She is currently working part time, and we've also hired two additional college and career advisors to support the work. Uh, before we begin, I just would like to. Um, Thank Gloria and congratulate her for pulling off a really great graduation at Bobart. You did yeoman's work. The kids were great. Um, everything went smoothly. It was a fantastic graduation, and I really appreciate your effort and the time that you put into it. And I know the kids and their parents did too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, just want to thank all the people that helped um, put this um, presentation together. And then thank you, Ms. Gloria and Zelaya, and then actually Ms. Lulu as well. So I'm excited to share this information because the things that you talked about today is exactly what we're aiming for as well. So when we're talking about graduation pathways, this is the state requirement for um, high school students. And we're looking at this, we're looking at students who are prepared. And so what we want to do is we want all of our students to be prepared. And thanks to the work that we're, um, that Ms. Chang did yesterday, the speech did yesterday about um, the lead, as a leadership charge, we looked at all the different components about talking about where we want to go with our students. So just to let you know, um, we discussed at WISE how this is prepared is basically the minimum requirement that we want our students to have. So just like the conversations we had, um, you had earlier, we want our students to not only be prepared, but also be ready, as well as be, um, really um, to be successful in life, not just in college, but really successful in life. So um, when we're looking at this requirement, like I said, this is the college, uh, college career um, readiness indicator. And uh, we're working, the goal, the way that we're gonna be focusing on this is, our goal is to increase how our students are gonna be presented in the prepared section. So we wanna make sure that we're increasing advanced placement classes, so we actually are. Um, including or increasing our number of AP classes. We actually have about two on board. And the other item is college credit courses. So we're actually increasing the number of dual enrollment classes oh. we have as well. So um, thanks to Ms. Elias' work um, with LACC, um, LA Trick Tech. And then we're also looking at the state field by Lindsay, um, increasing our students who are um, I recognized as being bilingual. So we're uh, making sure that our kids are taking Spanish and are able to have um, access to higher end um, AP Spanish classes, AP <laughs> as well as AP literature. And then also we're looking at the UC, um, Cal State, um, making sure that all our students are ACT required. Um, we're making sure, like for example, our ELD three and four classes are actually identified as ACT classes. Um, right now they're not. So we're going to work on increasing those numbers. So when we're looking at this, um, metric in terms of what California identifies as being prepared for college, we're looking at each one of those and trying to increase our students to make sure that our students, um, that we're providing um, support to make sure that our students are able to meet these requirements as well. So that's for us as a high school, basic um, target in terms of increasing the numbers for um, our students to be college ready. So I say this because that's gonna lead into a lot of um, information that I'll be sharing as well. Um, in the next couple of PowerPoints. So when we're looking at this as our high school, this is what we're looking at as a basic basic measure in terms of increasing our student performance and making sure they're college and career ready. So again, just a basic measure. And then I love the fact that you're um, empowering us to increase our ability to expand this as well. Like even something at CTE, even though they may not want to go to college, it's up to students who's like, I don't want to, I don't think I want to go to college. But I was like, how about culinary? Because that's what he did. He goes home and cooks for his family. So even thinking um, you know, ahead about CTE programs for our students as well as part of one of the measures for uh, success for students. So this is basically um, different pathways that we have. This is a WASP pathway. So when we come in, our students, we want to make sure that all of our students are um, not only APG ready, because those are basic requirements now, um, the state identifies as um, um, not prepared, they're just basic requirements, but now because it's a lot more rigorous, it's prepared, the WAS is basically preparing our students 
to be um, UC as well as CSU and private schools um, ready instead of just your basic college requirements. So this is um, our goal when students come in. This is where our expectation is that they have WOWS requirements. So we're going to definitely make sure with the new additional staff that we're tracking the students from the get-go from ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and providing any intervention at the very beginning in terms of ninth grade when we're doing this. And a lot of it is attributed to, uh, to staffing and making sure that we provide that. I know that Ms. Elias does a great job of getting um, our 12th grade students in there. She scheduled every single parent. She met with every single parent and their their and they discussed all the different requirements for this. But we want to make sure that we start off early. We want to make sure that we start off in ninth grade, um, having the students and the counselors meet with the parents twice a year. So that's our goal in terms of making sure that all our kids are prepared and ready to go from the very beginning. Just a quick question: What is it? What do the yellow highlights represent? So these yellow highlights are um, basically the same requirements that we have for all these. Do we have a community service requirement now, or is that the, is this something we're adding? Yes, we do have a community service requirement, 100 hours. That's good. Wait, so what is the yellow? Sorry, I didn't understand that. You said it's it's, it's the criteria that are uh, consistent across all three. Yes. So English, math, um, science. Content areas, not numbers of years. The what numbers the of years are different. So what about the community service aspect? So why is community service highlighted if it's just for WAS alone. Just trying to see where we differentiate ourselves from the California minimum. I mean, so I see. The highlighted areas are actually the differences that you'll see across all three classes. So um, when you see three years of English as a California minimum, you see over on the oh, okay. Wild okay. side, you have four years. That makes sense. Okay. So it's those so yellow ones are above and beyond California yes. minimums. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically the same requirements, but the the um, way that the WAD has is much higher in terms of the standards. Except for three. It's not the same, so yeah. Right, 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 got it. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, um, this is for this year, class of 2019. Uh, number of students who are graduating different pathways that we just had. The first one was the WAD pathway, 68%. Um, graduated with the four years of English, four years of math, um, so that's the broad pathway. 88%, which includes 68%, graduated with ABT, uh, which is the minimum requirement, and then also with the California minimum, there's 7%. How many students is 7%? Um, um, yeah, how many students is 7%? Yeah, so
and you go, I can't afford it, so I'm not going to apply. And the truth is, you can, and we have a lot of financial aid. And I assume that as we build a college council court, we'll make that clear that you should never look at the price and be scared. Because sometimes it's cheaper to go to USC than UCLA. I um, mean, you should go where it's right. However, undergraduates do better than graduates yes. today. <laughs> so one of the things we definitely want to do is um, increase the partnership with USC. I think definitely, uh, in terms of uh, the different works and in terms of proximity and because of our relationship there, um, I think definitely um, USC would be a great um, having, um, and that's our goal to increase our partnership with the different colleges. And just to let you know, one of the things that we are doing in terms of we uh, were provided with a Stemma Scholar Scholarship for about $30,000, and part of that was because we had already worked on their, um, on their uh, curriculum in terms of all information about college, access to college, um, specifically for Latino students, and uh, we do roll it out this year for all of our students, um, specifically in 9th and uh, 11th and 12th grade students, and um, we're looking at increasing that program. And we have four students that are going to be um, going to have all those different lessons. Um, like um, like what was mentioned earlier, I think I attribute some of my success really having the support of different people in my life. And also, when I was in high school, I was part of the upper bound program, and I think that helped me in terms of making sure that I knew what it was like. To, um, to be in college at a high school level, and then I actually took uh, global warrant courses, but at the same time, to see what the life is like and being able to ask questions, who to ask questions. So, I think those are basic things about colleges that we have. So. And my guess is SD has a much higher persistence rate than the UCs. To my knowledge, that is the case. Yeah. We work harder at it nowadays. That'd be interesting, Gip, because we want to guide our graduates to schools that have the best. 